Hi, welcome to the Brocade Campus Feature Explainer Series. I'm Terry Henry. Uh, this time around, we're going to talk about how to configure a management VRF. Uh, so a management VRF is the same as a normal VRF, uh, which I covered in another video, uh, except that rather than a separate um, uh, forwarding and routing table used by, by clients or by production data, it is a VRF that's only used for managing the device, right? So for Telnet, SSH, SNMP, um, you know, things like that will flow through that management. So, so much like a dedicated management VLAN, uh, except that it's a completely separate routing table. So we can run OSPF in it. We can put static routes in it. Um, you know, we could run BGP in it, and it's not going to affect the other production traffic, and production traffic is not going to affect this VRF. They're completely separate entities. Okay, so um, what we looked at in the other video is in some cases, especially on the ICX, um, we don't allocate any memory for, for non-default VRFs. In other words, we allocate all of the routing table for um, your default VRF or your, or your, your uh, default routing table. Um, and we don't allocate anything. So, uh, so if you want to run VRFs, you have to reallocate the memory. So, um, if I do a show default values here, uh, I have already changed the values on this device uh, because it requires a reload. But um, what you'll see here is in our routing table, we have 12,000 routes defined. Right? We can we can bump that to 15,000, but by default, there's 12,000 routes allocated in the routing table, right? Or in the uh, in the TCAMs. Uh, however, um, we have allocated all of that 12,000 to the default VRF. In other words, when you create another VRF, the management VRF or a production VRF, there's no um, there's no routing space available in the TCAMs, right? So in order to fix that, you have to drop that that number. So you have to drop the amount of uh, of of routes in the VRF in in the default VRF in order to give us space for the other VRFs, right? So what I did was um, I've actually changed it. So so it's it's 8,000 is what it's currently set to. So I already set it from 12,000 to 8,000 and then reloaded the box. So that gives us 4,000 available to allocate among multiple other VRFs. Um, now when we look at the system max, you'll see that I've all I've as since then changed it to 5,000, but I haven't reloaded the box. So it's still at 8,000 until I reload and then it's going to change to 5,000. And then this IP route VRF here or, or um, IP, IP6 route VRF, depending on whether you're running V4 or V6, it it's, um, defaults to 1,024 routes per VRF, assuming you have available space, right? Um, so if that was the case, I would only have enough space for four VRFs left, right, to, before I hit that 12,000 limit. So I dropped this down to 512. You can drop it even lower if you want, but that just gives me the ability to add more VRFs. So this hardware platform only allows for 16 anyway, the best case scenario. So, um, you know, you only have to allocate enough for 16. Um, now, if it was an MLXE or a CR, that would be a different story. But in this case, that's how it is. So you would change that with the system max command. So as I said before, I've already done that, right? So I changed my system max IP route default VRF to 5,000 and then system max IP route VRF. So each non-default VRF can have 512 routes in it and the default VRF gets 5,000 routes allocated. So, you know, depending on whether you're going to use the default VRF or how much you're going to use it and how much you're going to use the other VRS for, you know, you can alter those numbers appropriately. Um, now, this is a management VRF we're talking about. So, you know, it's probably only going to have a couple of routes, maybe one route in it. So you don't need a whole lot of space for this guy. Um, so if that's the only other VRF you're running other than default, then you need to make very few changes, but you still need to make those changes, do a write memory and a reload before you continue on. Uh, okay. So let's say we've got there. Um, now we're going to create a VRF just like any other VRF, right? So VRF, um, if you don't know how to do this, again, there's another video on multi-VRF that is quite detailed in how to create multiple VRFs and different routing tables, different uh, routing algorithm uh, protocols in each VRF, etc. cetera. Um, but in this case, so we're just going to create a VRF, um, and I'm going to call it MGMT for management. 
I'm going to give it a, a um, an RD. So this can be anything you want as long as that route discriminator is unique, right? So each VRF has to have its own route discriminator because that is a um, uh, or descriptor. So uh, that's how it how it tells the routes from one routing table to another based on the RD value, right? Um, then we're going to do the address family here. Address desk family uh, can be IPv6 or IPv4. Uh, we are just worried about IPv4 at the moment, so we're going to do that. Uh, and then I'm going to exit the VRF. So I've got my VRF created, right? Now, the box isn't using it for management at the moment. I've called it management, but it's still just a regular VRF at this point, right? Um, just for kicks, I'm going to turn on OSPF in this VRF. You don't have to do that. You could use static routes. You could use connected routes. You could use whatever you want. Um, but we are just, just for the sake of showing you how to do that, I'm going to turn on OSPF just to show you that even in a management VRF, I can run a routing protocol. Um, then I'm going to create a VLAN, VLAN 10. I'll name it uh, management. Okay. I'm going to tag uh, my uplink, um, and then I'm going to put a router interface in it. Call it VE10. VE number doesn't have to match the uh, VLAN number, but that's certainly a best practice. Then I'm going to configure my VE10 that I just created. So uh, first thing I'm going to do is do VRF forwarding and tell it what VRF this interface belongs to. So it's important uh, to do this first before you put IPs on, because if I do that afterwards, it's going to blow away all my IPs, as it just told me it would have, right? Um, so then I can put an IP address on my interface. So IP address um, 10.0.0.1 24 whatever the IP uh, range is for your management address. Uh, we'll turn on OSPF. IP OSPF area zero. So we'll just put that interface in area zero. Now that's not a global OSPF area zero. That that OSPF area zero only belongs to the management VRF. So that those routes don't go to any other VRF. They don't go to the default VRF. Um, they don't leave that box. Okay. So then, so this is just a regular VRF, right? So if I was creating a regular user VRF, I would be done at this point. Now, because it's a management VRF, I have one more step. So the only thing I have to do now is I just have to say management dash VRF and tell it the name of your management VRF, which we called MGMT. And now it says it's configured as a management VRF. So now all management to and from this device are, is now inside this management VRF, right? So, um, um, so let's see. So if I do a show IP route, what do I see? I don't see any routes, right? So, so even though I created this, you know, 10001 and that interface is up, so show interface E, one slash uh, three slash one. So, so that interface is up and up. So it should be put in the routing table. I should see a directly connected route in the routing table, but I don't because it's not in the default routing table, right? Or the default VRF, it's in my management VRF. So if I do a uh, show IP route um, VRF MGMT, there is my 10 route, right? Um, now I also see, I, I turn on OSPF, so I'm also learning an OSPF route from another router. Uh, so from my neighboring router, uh, 10 I'm learning an OSPF route. So I know OSPF is working. Again, if I do a show IP OSPF neighbor in the default VRF, I've got no neighbors, right? Oh, in fact, not only do I have no neighbors, but I'm not running OSPF in the default VRF. Uh, but if I do a um, show IP OSPF VRF management neighbor, there is my neighbor router on the other side. Okay, so um, let's see. Show VRF is going to show me what VRFs I have configured. So I only have one, which is called management, other than the defaults, of course, which is always there. I've got two routes in it. 
uh, it's VE10, so I've got two routes total. Um, show show VRF MGMT or my management VRF just shows me here's my router ID, here's the interface VE10. Um, I have a maximum of 512 routes because remember we set that system max and I have learned or I have two routes in there. And then lastly, if I do a show um, management dash VRF oops helps if I can spell here's my management VRF right so it's showing me um, receive drop transmit dropped um, or TCP connection reject so these are rejected because they're not part they're not uh, hitting the management VRF um, they're trying to hit the production VRF. So there's Telnet, SSH, TACX clients, um, SNMP, Engine, Radius client, TFTP client, traps, syslogs. So it's going to give you information about all the connections uh, within that management VRF. Also, um, if you do a show who here, for example, um, well, I don't have any connections at the moment, but if you had Telnet or SSH connections, it would tell you that they're coming into, you know, what what VRF they're coming into. So management VRF, um, etc. All right. So that's it for management VRF. Pretty straightforward. It's done exactly the same as every other VRF. You just have to add that management dash VRF command to put it in the management VRF and then management traffic is is confined to that VRF only. OK. So that's it. Pretty straightforward. And uh, join me again. Thanks very much.